There's no shortage of surprises in the silver market, and there may not be a shortage of silver after all, especially after what I just found out that could potentially cause the price of silver to fall below $20 an ounce yet again. I'll explain what I mean and so much more as we explore. Now, I don't think this is going to happen. I just want to tell you that right out front. It's a possibility. But I think what we're starting to see is maybe a equalization of the markets between East and West. I'll explain. User Mike Say 98 over on X has posted something that I think is quite intriguing. This account has been really good at posting what's been going on at the COMEX and the amount of silver and gold stored in the vaults there. And he posted a really good uh, data here that says the COMEX registered silver vault totals have now risen to over 73 million ounces. It's the highest total since May of 2022 and represents an increase of over 46 million ounces. That's 170% gain since bottoming out back in June of 2023. Now think about where silver prices were back then as opposed to where they are now. And think about where they were back in April and May of 2022. Uh, so it was fascinating to see, you know, obviously they were above $20, uh, but still there is a lot of uh, activity and sentiment based off of this silver shortage. And so we're seeing an influx of silver making its way in the registered silver that has been sent out. Uh, it makes you wonder what's going on and uh, here and what is going to be happening to those registered silver ounces. Will they be sent out? Will they be marked to be delivered? And where will they be delivered? That's the, really the question here. And I have a theory that expands upon what somebody else had posted about that there's that bullion banks essentially are buying physical silver, according to another comment on this, uh, from the Shanghai Exchange to cover their shorts. So in other words, I think probably what's happening is it's a go-between. They're sending the silver there to the COMEX to go and to uh, fill up the vaults in the Shanghai Gold Exchange because there is a lot of demand for silver in Shanghai, and they're going to be needing it. Uh, they're going to be needing a lot of that silver for industrial purposes, which means they want to be able to uh, liquidate it or to take possession and to be able to utilize it for such a time as for industrial uses and the like. So industrial-grade silver is being sent through there likely as well. And the Shanghai price is a couple of dollars higher, and it has been for quite some time. So maybe they're trying to equalize those markets to prevent an arbitrage situation. And that's my guess is what's going on. And that likely means that probably silver's price could fall. If they equalize, it's likely going to uh, be in such a way that the, uh, the, the Asian price is going to essentially fall back to where the prices are here. And that could kind of work against each other to where they all fall down, which is actually would be a good thing. In other words, it may be a manipulative move in order to bring the price down by stockpiling moving silver there to prevent that spread. And then all the excitement's kind of gone in terms of uh, silver that's there and what's happening and the pressure uh, on the vaults and, and Shanghai Gold Exchange and the COMEX. So the COMEX has got a lot of silver coming in and flowing through. Uh, and they've been increasing, by the way. Uh, the, what's shown here, essentially, it's been increasing since October of 2023, where silver will come in, and it gets depleted a little bit, but it's stair-stepping its way up. And since about April, uh, really into May, we've really seen it substantially go up. And now here we are uh, at the highest level we've seen uh, since uh, uh, May of 2022. And there's room for it to go up higher. It did get uh, back around um, February of 2022. It got over 90, 90 million ounces. So uh, think about where the price was there. 
How long will it stay in there? Uh, in the in the registered category, you know that's another thing we have to think about as well too. When it when it comes to the stockpiles and the COMEX and where and how the silver is managed in those vaults. Uh, and some people uh, on another posting say, well, they just don't believe the numbers. Maybe they're double counting. Uh, I don't know. I don't. I think it's probably accurate data. It's just where is it going? How long will it be there? And and on the like. And I think the theory that it's going into to fulfill and to maybe create, uh, to help stem what could be a potential real problem in the Shanghai Gold Exchange is because, remember, the Chinese have been buying a lot of silver uh, as well. And not just the government and uh, industry, but also citizens it's because gold's price is so high. And so I think that's part of the reason why we're seeing the price go up and uh, and to where it is now. But you think about it, if an inflow of silver comes in, an influx or a glut of it comes through there, uh, that's mined and processed and, and put into uh, COMEX size bars, a COMEX contract, by the way, there's two different sizes. There's the large contract, which is 5,000 ounces. And then there's a small contract, which is 1,000 ounces. So obviously the, the bar size is 1,000 ounces and they're and they're, you know, what's considered pure, which is a, you know, about three nines, fine, usually. And they weigh somewhere around a thousand ounces. Some of them can be anywhere like 995 ounces or 1,012 ounces. It's somewhere in that arena. Uh, very hard, tough to get to get your hands on a COMEX bar, a thousand ounce bar, which weighs about 72 pounds. Although SD Bullion used to carry them. And back during the silver squeeze movement, you could actually buy them from there. People were trying to get their hands on the physical, and they wanted to get it from the physical that is actually supposedly backing up the uh, what's uh, what's shown in in the in, in the in the vaults, the COMEX, and and the LBMA. So uh, I'm wondering if that's what's going on. I don't know. It's speculation, but you think about it. If those markets equalize between east and west, preventing this arbitrage, then I think likely we very well could see prices fall. And maybe it gets to a point where, who knows, especially if a recession hits, if we do start to see a recession and the economy starts to uh, turn, just like what we're seeing with uh, in some areas in, in the East and really around the world, the economy is not good in many of these countries. Uh, the Japanese yen is, is starting to to really struggle right now. It's, a, it's gone, it's, it's really falling compared to the US dollar. Things like that are, are are situations that could come into play. And when you think about the strength of currencies against one another, and then you think about uh, what uh, is going to go on with the economies uh, and, and recessions that could spread to other countries in the region and that could have a, an impact on, on here, on here in the U.S., and potential for a recession here. Uh, well, that means the demand for silver is going to fall. And then you get more silver flowing through, and that's going to cause the price to go down. Uh, so uh, that is something that could be on the radar to look out for to see if it occurs, if what I'm talking, if, if this speculation turns out to be right. Again, I don't think it's going to really happen, at least not anytime soon. Uh, and there's been times where it's been much higher in the vaults, and the price has been well above, well above $20 an ounce. Remember, last time we saw the silver in the teens was before the pandemic. And I think there's something to be said about, you know, inflation that we see ourselves today that is kind of really, in a sense, booing up silver because, well, it takes more fuel uh, or more. The fuel is more expensive now, uh, as well as other things are more expensive to process. Um, uh, everything is up. Everything is more expensive, including the cost to mine silver, even as a byproduct of other metals. And so that's the other thing you have to think about as well, too. Plus the cost to fabricate it in whatever form you see fit to own, whether it be collectible pieces like this. This is not the kind of silver you should stack uh, by any stretch, but just have it here just for display uh, or or bars or rounds. You know, there's a very different, a myriad of different ways to be able to accumulate it, but it's a lot more expensive to to process and to refine and to and to produce silver products out there than it has been in before the pandemic and before we saw inflation really hit us hard 40-year high inflation and 
and it's not going away anytime soon. And so keep that in mind uh, that, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of things that are keeping silver and will keep silver uh, up a certain level. But, hey, if we do see a panic or or uh, uh, stockpiles of silver come through and there's a glut of it somewhere and there is a uh, recession, uh, then I think it's going to affect the spot price as well. And it's going to go down and perhaps even tank. Uh, this is just could be one sign of it. Uh, you know, gone are the days, at least for the COMEX, of, of a dwindling supply of silver in the stockpiles. So let me know what your thoughts are on this story. Fascinating indeed. It's always interesting to take a look at what's going on in the silver market. It's always exciting. If you enjoy content like this where I provide you the latest news, insight, and analysis in the world of precious metals, hope you would consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. And maybe press that thumbs up button down below if you find value in the content that I provide here. So I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to each and every one of you for taking the time to watch this video. And to encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.